Hello and welcome to Cage Fighting. It is Matt Guy here, which can mean only one thing. It is a music ass episode because Andy is jet lagged to fuck and back. Yep, daddy's home and he's still fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> daddy's home too. Does that count now? That I. <laughs> yeah, it should have been. It. Go, I'm sure there's been one way Matt's done it anyway that hasn't been a music cast. I'm sure there was uh, one. I did that one where I interviewed the lady from the lighthouse. Yes, there yeah, we Kelly are. from the lighthouse. Yeah, it is. Well, speaking of debutants, uh, I have um, someone from our less successful podcast, Wolves Fancast, um, here. This is uh, Adam at Pricey Price. How are we? Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is quite weird, actually. Just this, this whole thing is a bit surreal. Three familiar faces, <laughs> and we're going to have no... Starstruck. Podcast. That's what it is. Well, I'm, is the, I'm, I'm sun, sunstruck from the shiny lights off all your three bull bunces, yeah? <laughs> I know, to be fair, we need a disclaimer if we ever put this on video. Um, because, yeah, yeah, we are follic- more follically challenged than most. Um, thank you very much, Price, for coming on to this. We are doing a festival edition Um me and uh, Price are going to download this year and they released like some news over the last week and I thought it'd just be a good opportunity to do a themed episode still based around music but for festivals. Um, Price, before we go into the festival chat, one question that we ask everybody, what is your net, your favourite Nick Cage film and why? I probably in preparation for coming on this show, I should have watched more Nicolas Cage films. <laughs> Nicholas Coppola, as ever I didn't realise his name was. That shows how much mm-hmm. I, shows how little I know about the man himself. But uh, from the films I have watched, I'll probably just have to say The Rock, because like most films he's in, he's a mentalist, isn't he? I can just yeah. remember some scenes where, I think he's fighting with Sean Connery and he's trying to shove those green, illuminous balls in his mouth or something something like that. It's been a while since I watched it, but I just remember The Rock being quite a favourite of mine. I don't, know how that, I don't yeah. know how well that goes down with you with your regulars, if, if that's, you know, I can see Andy's nodding like his a, head, so that's all right. It's like a top five for most of us, yeah. I think, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah the it Rock still text. holds up. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and if you are going to the cinema, bearing in mind, I know you have... Um, I know you have small ones, so going to the cinema costs you like a month's wages. Um, what is your favourite cinema snack and why? So um, this might please Andy. I do not like to take in anything that crunches like a, like nachos or any of that yes. shite. And I do think people should be banned. I, do you know what? People in cinemas are just annoying bastards anyway when they, when they get in there. However, the snack I like to take, and maybe it's a bit controversial, I like to take in with me a hot drink and some chocolate, preferably like Galaxy Buttons or something. Not Galaxy, mm, okay. but Galaxy, Galaxy related to take in with me. Um, I'll probably get through too many before the film's even started and I'll feel a bit like bloated and shitty because I'm full of That's hot, the rule. hot drink and chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> but If you've got your snacks by the time your film started, you've done something wrong, really. That's, that's just how it works. Me and Andy, have, I don't think Stu's divulged in, in this habit, but me and Andy, are, we, we're partial to a coffee at the cinema now, aren't we, to be fair? Every time. I mean, this goes back to uni days when at um, the lighthouse, I would always go in with a coffee anyway. And it just feels a bit more civilised than having a massive fuck off, uh, like what, a litre worth of sugar. Like coffee it just doesn't coke. feel right anymore. Yeah, it's just not right for me. So yeah, a coffee will do. Which is why I can't do those 4DX films, because otherwise I'm going to get burnt to fuck. <laughs> I mean, it is a peep behind the curtain, but how utterly coffee hipster that them two both are, that he had some kind of medieval torture device that he took to work because he couldn't drink the, the paltry coffee that they had off and off of there. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was, God knows what it was. I have to put it on Twitter on Monday, but... Yeah, it was just a drip funnel. Like, I, I just needed what the fuck a is good that? coffee. <laughs> <laughs> No normal people know what these things are. A, a drip funnel sounds very kind of like something you... No, let's not get surprised really again. That was a bad idea. <laughs> it, but it, does it, like it didn't look normal. It doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it, I, take no. a caf- I take a fancy cafetiere to work with me, so I, have, so I can have the good stuff. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Oh, well, where you don't get a good coffee, generally speaking, is at a festival. Um, so... 
uh, Stu, have you been to a festival in terms of like camping and staying over? Have, have you done, or have you done, you've probably done some kind of 90s horror show that has like Bewitched and Aqua and everything else. What's your festival experience, if any? Zero. Zero. So you're going to come with, with, with fresh eyes. So this is all yeah. hypothetical, which I, which I like because we can see just how naive you are to how horrible festivals are. <laughs> uh, Andy, what about yourself? Are you in a similar boat to Stu? Have you been to a few festivals? I've been to a few weekenders and like single days, like a trip down to London for London's calling or something like that. Just mm-hmm. the odd one day or as well. Yeah. And Price, what about yourself? What was your first foray into festival life? <laughs> well, uh, in the interest of being open and honest on this uh, on this here podcast, I feel as if I should um, give you a little anecdote of the first time that I please attempt- do attempted to go to uh, a music festival which was which was download of course because i mean back in those days i can't i think i was about 20 or something like that and uh me and my school friends had like just started toying with the idea of going to festivals and um my schoolmates went to the first one which were the first download which was mm-hmm. um well in biscuit pulled out shortly before the festival so it was i think it was iron maiden and audio slave Anyway, I was I was going to join them for the next one, and I, I was a bit naive. I, I didn't didn't know if I wanted to, to wasn't sure if I wanted to do it or not. So I decided at the last minute on the Saturday night that I would go and meet my friends on the Sunday for um, the two days before download, which to those who don't know is the a rare one because it was the one where Lars Ulrich was ill and Metallica had to mm-hmm. like wait an hour and a half before they went on and became a bit like Metallica, Metallica karaoke, didn't it, with all the, the guest drummers. Yeah. It and is. Um, so I decided, and bearing in mind, you have to bear in mind that this is a time before smartphones and sat, you know, but I didn't have a sat nav or anything like that. So the night before the festival, I went on Google Maps and printed off, I had to, I had to print off the directions. <laughs> right? I think I know where this is going. And so in my haste, I got in the car, anyone, I loaded up the car with drinks, snacks, and for some reason I went and got a News of the World paper to read as well. Don't know why, but I just did. And off I set to Donington. And then about half an hour later, I got there. Unfortunately, in my haste, I put an extra N in and I turned up at RAF Donington in Telford. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's rough. And such was my embarrassment. I just I, I, I sat, I put part of the car up in the lay by, read my paper, I had a bit of a had a bit of drink and I just drove home in embarrassment and just sat in the garden for the rest of the day. I didn't, I didn't go meet my mates. I was too embarrassed. <laughs> oh man, I bet um, like you, you were closer to V Festival than you were to um, to, <laughs> to download. Well, yeah, when you look at it it's on the map, I was literally going in the opposite direction from where I should have been going. I should have been going east. I was going west, but um, oh man, yeah. I, I mean, I was, that was a bit of a full full start, and then yeah, after that, I, I've um, obviously become a bit of a festival veteran. I've got like copious amounts of downloads under my belt i think up until like like i said the family started coming along and then i either dropped it down to one day or didn't go at all and i got a couple of some been to a couple of sonospheres and one reading festival so i've got a few covered off and very, very very fun experiences at all three to um to varying degrees and many stories to tell yeah absolutely um the first one i went to was that download um with metallica karaoke and been to a couple i remember going to v festival getting home on the monday then going to reading on the thursday and it was for the for then that weekend so by the end of that two weeks god my ass was in bits um (laughs) but it's um they are really good fun but at the same time it is like the worst of people (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like you know you've seen Woodstock 99 I don't like it's never really descended into that but there's been some hairy moments there was that download riots when Guns and Roses played that was a bit of a weird um that was a weird mm. one everyone was really dead tetchy all weekend and it ended up with like fires in the campsites and stuff like that were you there at that one I was that was um I hold that one quite dear in my heart actually the 2006 because that was the first time that um a big group of us went I'll say all schoolmates, and we, we stopped in Blue Camp, which was like the first camp site that you come to, really. It's closest to the arena. And then um, weather was glorious all weekend. I remember being sunburnt as shit on like 
for Saturday. I think I was watching, I particularly remember it stick out, I was watching Cradle of Filth on the main stage in blistering mm-hmm. hot sun. So you can imagine they're all, all the goths uh, are there. All like, <laughs> they, they won't get some butt burn because I've got an inch thick layer of makeup on the face. But I was sunburned to shit watching Cradle of Filth. And, and then, yeah, come the Sunday, obviously everyone's all expecting what's, what Guns N' Roses is going to do. And I don't know whether it's because, obviously, it went a bit sour, didn't it, during during mm-hmm. their set and he stormed off for a bit, which really we shouldn't be shocked about because it is Axl Rose. And then um, I remember him giving like a finger, to, middle finger to like, the, the stage manager who stormed off and his bass player launched his bass guitar, didn't he, and, into the crowd mm, and, yeah. and hitting one of the cameramen. So it was all going wrong for a bit and then he, he come back out and it all finished fine. But when we got back to the the campsite, I mean, this was a time when campfires were allowed and I don't think there was any really restrictions on how no, big no your way. fire can be. So people's tents ended up going in these fires and... Um, the gas canisters, which you're allowed on your cookers, they started end up going in people's bit fires <laughs> as well. Mm-hmm. And then, at one, obviously, you, you, you give it more of a curiosity, and you all stand around in all these big crowds, and you stand by the fire, and one of these gas canisters exploded, and a bit of shrapnel hit my mate's leg. My mate Big Al, as you, everyone's got a mate called Big Al. My mate Big Al got a bit of shrapnel in his leg, and then um, didn't hurt him, just like just bounced off him, but. It all got a bit like Lord of the Flies that night oh, God, because yeah. like fires were <laughs> popping up everywhere. I think when the police turned up, they just got things thrown at them, and we didn't. None of us in our group went to sleep that night because we didn't want to go to sleep in case one of our tents was jumped <laughs> on someone's fire. <laughs> and then we woke up about six in the morning, and it was like like the last place on earth. Like you look around, and it was just like plumes of black smoke everywhere from where all the people's fires had been put out and. The big dumpsters where everyone chucks their rubbish in, they'd been obviously set alight and turned over and all the police were just trying to get people off the site. So it was a hell of a year. Yeah, it was crazy. I remember that being just like exactly the same. I just didn't sleep a wink and I was like, the second I can get out of here, I'm gone. <laughs> um and it was just it was just madness. But like you don't expect it in the rock like the rock crowd generally to like a good crowd of people that look after each other, but then there was the same with the Woodstock stuff, so um maybe maybe music maybe heavy metal music is the devil after all but um we've uh we had a question on um twitter from uh dean mars did about um the most embarrassing festival kind of story um and like if you've been to see rolf harris or someone like that and obviously how that would have turned out um the only like the only kind of embarrassing like thing that ever happened was we had like a full kit wanker day me and my mates where we all went in full kit um (laughs) And it looked great because we were all together, like loads of us in full kit. But I just lost everyone for ages. So it's just me on my own in like boots, <laughs> socks, shin pads, shorts, looking <laughs> looking like the special kid who's been let out for the day and who's lost their carer. And it was like, 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 <laughs> like on my own, it looked ridiculous and awful. But like in a group, it looked like a stag or something like that. So it didn't look so bad. But yeah, I, I was a bit like, I was a bit like, and again, it was like before like, you had phones and stuff, but it was you, you, well. You couldn't charge your phone because there was never anywhere to charge them, so they ran out after like a day or two. So that so that was it anyway. But there we go. But what I want to talk about is go through a few kind of hypothetical questions and then come to a real music based question. But what is absolutely essential at a festival is good food. Might not be nutritious, but it's good food. And when you're in the arena. It's usually a long walk back to your tent to to make any food. So you'll need to go and use the very overpriced facilities. So if I could give you the financial backing, what would be your food choice or food truck of choice? It needs to be able to fuel you for the day, but also help you with a hangover. Stu, take it away. Well, this is going off. I mean, just because I haven't done festivals, I've obviously done gigs and, and sporting events and all kinds of things as well. So food courts and things like that is very much up my street, with street in the field. The obvious one for me that I, I've had a, a, I had a cricket a couple of times and <laughs> amazingly, a, a, an Oasis gig as well back in 2002, was Tika in a box. Hmm. And... I had it at, 
well, yeah, it, it was it was Oasis at Old Trafford Cricket Ground, so he was a he was a cricket thing as well. Um, and then I had it at the twenty twenty, and it, it it was like Mister Tika before Mister Tika was a thing, and it come in a big big box that you'd get you'd expect like them roll over hot dog things that you get at football, but obviously better, full of proper or chicken or beef or whatever you want, rice and chips if you want to be a deviant. But it's always, every time I've had that, it's always been high quality because it's almost like you can't really skimp that kind of thing. Mm. So you need to have it, you need to make it properly or you're going to poison people. So you, yeah, you pay through the nose a little bit, but it does the job and you can eat it first thing in the morning. You can eat it last thing at night. Take in a box all day long. in a box. Mm. How about yourself, uh, Andy? What um, what are you bringing to the festival party? I mean, just to touch on stews for a moment, there is a reason that Mr. Teak has always got the longest queue whenever you get to the football. Yeah. Like, it, it does, if you've been for a drink or whatever, you've got a shitload of your naan bread, which is going to soak up the alcohol. And I imagine it's quite easy to prepare all that stuff. So I could, could see something like that really thriving at a festival. Um, my choice would be tacos, though, because, again, I think you get the if you have like a flower taco, so it's not the the, sh- the shell, it's more like a wrap. Have that. You can prepare all your meat. You've got a shitload of all of your cilantro and guacamole, everything that you need to go with it. It can all be easily prepared before you get there. It's finger food, so you ain't really got to worry about, you know, knife and fork or any of that nonsense. You just give someone a little tray and then jobs are good. And, and plus with that, you also get stuff like your sweet potato fries and all, all of the accoutrement that come with it. Mm. So I think that would be really popular. And I think that would just do the job. Plus, I'd love Mexican food. So that would be that would be my um, my food truck of choice. I have underprepared for this. Uh, for, for, <laughs> uh, Bryce, what uh, what is your uh, food truck of choice at the festival? So, I mean, you see some people at these festivals that make horrendous food choices when they're walking around. I mean, you, you've got untold options at a festival, lots of different types to pick from. So I'm always like, oh, my heart sinks a bit when I see someone walking around with a big shitty pizza, right, that's just like whoever's mm-hmm. cooked it hasn't tried they've just slapped a bit of cheese on given a bit of tomato there you go that's 12 quid please i think well, why are you doing that my go-to choice and it doesn't stray too far from andy's choice is burritos mm-hmm. so yeah. i would all i i would happily i happily spend 10 pound on the uh burritos that have like all the extras on like it has all your salsa in the guacamole spicy rice in there and it's all and the beans it's all and they, they, they can do a burrito properly unlike me i always miss a bit and all the stuff falls out the bottom of my burritos <laughs> and i make a right mess and i've got to have a share afterwards but um i've all, i've always been a burrito person um so my pick would be that again it's got a lot of meat filling for your meaty goodness, plus your flat, you know, the, the 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 burrito should help, you know, soak up a bit, you know, a bit of your mm. of your alcohol. But it, well, cause let's face it, people start drinking early doors, don't make festivals. Oh, god, um, they do. And I think the only thing that comes second to that really is something noodle based. Mm. Yeah, mm. I'm 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 down for that because noodles, it's carbs. It should so again give you a bit of energy for the day. It should fill you up for a bit, but. It's it's a poor not a poor second, but it's a second place to to me and my, my burritos. It's going to end up like Arsenal in the city, basically. So far behind. Um, <laughs> I've gone with more of an entrepreneurial. Is that a word? Um, head for mine, and I've simply gone for hash browns. <laughs> now, it, hash browns, <laughs> hash brown is the base, and then depending on what time of the day, you then could order accompaniments to it. So for the morning, you could have hash browns and porridge, double carbs. Um, for like later on into the afternoon, you can have hash browns and, and meat or hash browns and bacon or something like that, maybe in a wrap or something. And then later on into the evening, when you've got a sweet tooth, you can have hash browns with a bit of you know, sauce on it or syrup or something like that and make it really Americanized. And everyone loves a hash brown. It's a comfort food at the same time. 
and the grease would help with the hangover as well. We went to, um, me and um, the good lady went to a wedding of a close friend of, of ours and they had a hash brown truck as their kind of thing. Like everybody has to have a thing at a wedding. We had an ice cream van. They had a they had a hash brown truck and it was just amazing because they'd just come around with like a plate, a huge plate of dips and stuff and we're just handing out hash browns like it was out of fashion and you just had loads of like fried potato and little bits of like, oh, oh, is that, a bit, is that an American mustard? Yeah, I'll have a go on that. Oh, is that like a, a, a salsa dip? Oh, I'll have a go on that. It was amazing. amazing. Yeah, it was. It was good. And then you, like, in order to keep it relevant to like a metal festival, I'd, I'd call it Slash Browns. <laughs> that's what it would. That's how I'd keep it. Like very good. Keep oh, it in. Stu, did you have something to comment on this hash brown phenomena? No, I, I've I've seen someone build like when you said hash browns and porridge. I have seen someone like build like a bowl with hash browns. Like you have one on the bottom, and then you have <laughs> like you have three around the side, and then you put beans in the middle. So it, it's not as mental as you as you're saying because you could use it. Like liquid liquefied sugar and kind of bond it together, that would work. That's Especially right. if you if you go in porridge, some kind of fried version of Stonehenge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For a festival, perfect. Exactly, exactly. Well, after all of this um, carby food and it doing terrible things to your stomach, and uh, unfortunately, at a festival, five day festival, you're going to need to do two things. You're going to need to have a shower and you're going to need to have a shit. It's a fact of life. Um, some of the toilets at some of the festivals I've been to have been near, you know, the Geneva Convention won't help you. It's just a huge septic tank and a piece of wood and holes carved out. Mm. And you can see and smell everything. Others have been more port loos that have still been awful, but at least there's a door. Um, <laughs> which, um, But what I want to know is, if you were going to a festival, what's the longest you can and have gone without a shower? And what's the maximum you pay to have a shit in a nice toilet at a festival? Because I have paid, I've parted with cash to use a company called Pootopia at a festival um, that was like, <laughs> it was just posh toilets, basically, that didn't get used a lot. And it was just a better experience. But I was like, I was at my wit's end by this point. So, Stu, showers and shits, let's talk. I mean, I can shit anywhere. I mean, I've, I've done it before where like, Places such as Swansea away at the vet, at the old vetch when there was no no seat and you you're literally squatting in a cupboard. Um, but again, needs must. It doesn't bother. I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, <laughs> but at the same at the same time, it depends how desperate. If you're that desperate, then I'll go anywhere. I'll shit anywhere. Don't bother me. Um, I ain't one of them people who, who has to wait till you get home or anything like that. Toilets, football grounds. If there's a hole to shit in, I'll shit in it. Um, and there it is. <laughs> but it, it, I just don't. It, it's one of them things. Eh? It's if you can, if I could hold it in, like I could go two or three days if I really, if I really had to, and I concentrated. Um, you know, two or three days without it if I needed to. It wouldn't be very comfortable. But, but would the would the would the conditions be enough to put you off of a toilet that was like rancid? You can see everything below and that kind I of mean, thing. It kind of made me want to just add to it. <laughs> um, if you're talking about like the toilet from the train spotting or something like that, um, that's that's probably good yeah. in comparison to some festival mm. toilets I've been to. Yeah, that, there was there was one like that in in Blackpool once, and um, that it wasn't nice. But again, I had I didn't need to use it. But if I had to, would I probably? But you just just squat, you just don't touch anything. It's you, it's the only way to be really. Um, but if you're covered in mud and all kinds of madness anyway, does it really matter? Not to me. So what about the shower thing? Like, would you be able to go five day festival without a shower? Baby wipes enough. I mean, in, in my twenty, I mean, this is the thing where I didn't really have. I was going to say I didn't have friends. I didn't have friends who, who went to festivals. This is why I never went to one. So I didn't know anyone at that time who'd actually gone to one at all. Other than the one, there was the school Grebo who who didn't leave his house, um, but that was about it. So I was kind of isolated on my own until later in life, and then, like Price, he said that the the curse of kids had already struck by then. But there were times in my twenties where I would go for three or four days, 
literally we, we, when there's a show in the house for no reason other than, ah, well, it's a wasted 10 minutes, eh? A bit of a baby boy. Little, get the uh, the little poof from the shower and just wash in the sink. But, so so I, I've, I've literally done it in civilised world, so I guess three, four days wouldn't be a problem. Okay, interesting. Andy, that fine upside down mane on your chin takes <laughs> takes some maintenance so could you go the five days without a shower at a festival because mine gets my beer gets itchy after a day mm. you know wh- how, how would you feel about that i think now is very different to when i would have gone to festivals I, oddly i was just looking at pictures of me the last time i was at a festival when i had lung hair and no beer so it was back to normal and it would have just been going through a shitload of dry shampoo to try and get through this. I would have gone the whole weekend without a shower, but I don't think I could do it now. I think I would need to have one. I think you could push it to maybe three days. I think the morning of the fourth, I would feel like absolute shit and I would need a shower. So, Mm. yeah, I don't think I could go a whole weekend without it now. Back when you were younger, it was nothing really, because everyone stunk, you were all together. That's kind of what a festival is. I don't, I think I'm a bit too old for that shit now, to be honest. <laughs> and would you part way with a purple note with a king's head on to have a use of a good toilet or are you not for so? Quite probably. Um, like the, the Leeds Festival is the one I always used to go to. And that was literally the six foot ditch with planks of wood over it. And I remember like having to hold on to the bottom of the door so my <laughs> ass would hang over this seat so that it could drop down. My, my ass was not touching that seat. I dread <laughs> to think what I'd have caught. But like, if you looked down into it, you could just see, like, literally see shit floating past. <laughs> it was the worst experience ever. But like you said, needs must. If the option was there to say 20 quid to have, to go and have a poo and not feel rushed or, you know, like I was about to catch the AIDS or something, I think I'd probably <laughs> pay it. Yeah, okay. I think I would. Have yeah, we yeah. um have we got money with the king's head on yet? Um, I don't think so. It's because surely when he's it's after he's officially coronated, I'd have thought. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, 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 I hadn't even thought about it until then. No, I'm not sure. The only um, no, I don't know. Price, this is your world. When are we getting the king's head on a note? When are we be able to snort cocaine with Charles? You can make your own <laughs> right now. Charlie with Charlie. Get some fake ones. Get some fake ones with Charlie on. Exactly. Um, what about you then, Price? How are you on this uh, on this topic? Showers and toilets at festivals. Give me the the four one one. Right. So I've done an about turn on this as as the years have gone on. So in the early days, uh, so again. I'll, I'll return to the 2006 one. We and all, all the 10 of us that were going, we met up on Thursday morning at McDonald's on Clark's Lane, Will and all. We had our pre Donington poo in McDonald's and then set off and didn't have a shit at all the entire weekend. Oh my God. Uh, I somehow managed to, to hold it in. And then the, the year after, in 07, I actually bung myself up with uh, some Imodium for the weekend. I didn't want to run the <laughs> risk. So it was a mother of all splashdowns when I, when I got back home on Monday morning oh. into the toilet. Because you, you can imagine that's like, like four or five days worth of my burritos and what have you, all, <laughs> all, all, backing, all backing up back there. We're just ready for the bomb doors, the trap doors to open, the bombs away in the toilet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I... I I'd hold. I'd, I wouldn't go in the early days. I'd, I'd, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a shit. I'd. I'd just hold it in. Well, I'd, I would say hold it in. Like I'm walking around, clutching my stomach and like cramping around all, all weekend. <laughs> I just. I was fine. I just. I just didn't go. Showers was the same. So I never. I never showered. I went with the full expectation I was going to be a complete tramp for five days, and I wasn't. I was going to get filthy, dirty. I'd, I'd take the baby wipes, as you say, and I'd have me a scout shower every morning. Have a you know quick quick wipe in the pits and some elsewhere, you know, and then just throw them, throw the wipes in the bin after you finished. That all changed when, um, when my my best mate started coming with me in probably 
was it 09, I think, he started coming with me. And he, he stipulated that I have to have a shower every morning. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you know, it's, we don't generally do this, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the showers are. So, again, we, we were with a big group that year. So I took him to the showers. And then I I said, I'd, 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 you know, I said I'll, I'll have a go. I'll have a shower, see what it's like. And I was like a, a man reborn after having a shower. <laughs> I was like, I was, looks like I'd seen the light. And I thought, oh, this is not, like I feel a bit, I feel fresh now after doing this. This is this is a revelation. And he was a bit keen. So, like, he would go in the shower before they'd even, like, warm the tank up. So he would have a cold shower at the festival where it's probably generally going to be cold anyway because it's june it's probably still freezing cold the morning over here i at least waited a little bit so that the the tanks are warmed up so i had a warm share at least um so yeah i've changed now if if, if i was to to camp again this year which i'm not then i would i would be having showers of a morning Mm. um and when it comes to shitting nowadays yeah i mean like like you guys like of those long drops, they're like they're like a crime scene, aren't they? Those long drops when yeah. you look at them, you look down into like you know, like the Ghostbusters too, the river of ooze. It's like a river of shit, isn't it? Like that, <laughs> all leading to the New York Library. Um, yeah, and like you, you just look at it, and sometimes like you look at the, you open the door, and you know the ones either side are, are no better. You just open the door, you look, and you just go, oh. <laughs> God, there's the shit on the seat. Like, there's actual like actual fecal matter all over the seat. Someone's done this deliberately, I'm sure. <laughs> and there's no bog roll in there either. So you think, oh God, what am I going to what my ass with? I haven't even got any receipts on me to use. Um, you just think, what, <laughs> what am I going to do here? This, like, some of it is absolutely horrendous. And again, later on, you used to I used to get up with my mate who loves to show us. Used to get up at six a.m. to have to have a shit, like as the years gone by. We used to get first dibs once they restocked the toilets and clean them. We used to get in there first before the queues formed at, at the at the cubicles. Um. So yeah, it's something. I mean, I, I, to be honest, with us blokes, we can piss anywhere, can't we? But when when mm. it comes to girls, God, I feel sorry for them. They've got no choice unless they want to squat like in the bushes somewhere. But what, what I have seen, and this one particular girl did have a lot to drink. She, when we was in the arena, she wandered into the bloke's toilets and just literally plonked herself down in the urinal, just sat right down in it for a piss. So, well, you, no, you, you, Jeez. you, madam, must be desperate <laughs> to do that. But that's um, why you do. Uh, you take uh, you take a shiwi, the one of the most romantic presents I ever bought my wife. Isn't that called a drink? Um, yeah, that one, <laughs> Andy took to work with his coffee. <laughs> it's not too dissimilar, actually. To be fair, um, in, in shape and ergonomics. Um, yeah, I was, I was like, we were we, we were going through a phase of going for like loads of walking, and like we'd have to if we were in the, in the middle of like a ten mile walk, and you and you know, my my anatomy is is okay for a quick exit, but for a lady, unfortunately, it's not that easy. So she we is the is the way forward for festival life, I think. I did, um, uh, I did try that. Go on. Like you say, I did, I did try the one year. I think I did try like one of these fancy loos. Mm-hmm. But I think it was in the early days where I think all they did, when they say fancy, in inverted commas there, they just kept chucking hay on top of your shit, basically. When, when, <laughs> yeah. It masks the smell, doesn't it? It's like it's an open air um, rectangle box, isn't it, essentially? So you can look mm-hmm. up and watch the planes flying over if you're at Donington and while you're having your shit, take your time, enjoy yourself. And then like afterwards, on, on goes the hay on top. And worth then, every penny. Yeah, there you go. And the next one, you get a bit of peace and quiet while you're having your shit. I might not say peace and exactly. quiet because there's heavy metal behind you, but you know. <laughs> you know what? You know when you used to suck it back in, so to speak, as you said. Did you ever get to the stage where if you, when you uh, retracted the <laughs> oh, old yeah. sphincter? Sorry, sorry, sorry. What, what, what did I suck back in? <laughs> it's festival life. Um, <laughs> when the, when the sphincter is going back inside yourself, did it make you burp? Because whenever I've done it that before, that's what happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> what oh did God. I did I burp because I was holding a shit in? Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> uh, I can't honestly say I don't think no. I don't think I did. But to be honest, I think that's must this be something that's in your anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked this podcast when we still had it on the air. Um, 
Um, so I'm going in my van this year, and we've um, for reasons we have to have electric because we've got to keep some stuff in a fridge. Um, so it's all going to be very civilized this year for me. So I don't have to worry about any of this because we paid for camper van plus, so we get individual showers and individual proper toilets and a receptionist and all this stuff in like the fit in the <laughs> like and that in a proper shop on in the bit. So um, I'm going to walk around like looking at people like a proper tour you can just be like look at these scumbags in their tents but uh so unfortunately none of those uh none of those issues for me this year which i'm quite pleased after reciting back what it was like with uh for you guys and what your experiences would have been you'll be walking around let's like, um, um vince mcmahon right yeah you'll be walking exactly. like vince McMahon <laughs> <as well. laughs> let's get this back on track musically i want you to design a festival basically three days three bands each day and each day needs to follow some form of musical theme. Um, who's your kind of ideal clientele you're pitching this for? And if you can, where would you hold it? Stu, what about you? So, I mean, probably has already mentioned, not the Telford one, the proper Donington, because it's big and it's just down the road. <laughs> um, so it's nice and easy for us. And this is these three days are pitched at me. So there's your pitch. I mean, I don't know who else is going to be in this kind of weird menage of madness. Um, but day one, going with the glass, the Glastonbury Friday, Saturday, Sunday vibe. I went on the Friday. I thought, well, keep it classic Friday night when I used to go to walk about. Modernize it a little bit. So I, the three bands I went with was. Avicii, David Guetta, and Scooter. Oh my god. Scooter. <laughs> what more what more Friday night can you possibly get than that? True. Warms up nice and calm. And then you get your scooter madness for an hour and a half. Which it's still I will I will go and see Scooter one day. That is one of my things that just has to happen. Then day two, when everyone's kind of calmed down a little bit. Bring it. Bring it back up slowly with a bit of skid row. Okay. And then uh, blending into Motley Crue and then finishing off with Guns N' Roses. Okay. I didn't expect that from you. Mm. And then obviously everyone's gone for two days, gone completely insane. So, and very hungover and dirty. So yeah. on the Sunday, it's a calm down a bit before it warms up again with Cortinas, Libertines, and then ending with Sam Fender. Okay, that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. I expected it to be. Yeah, you thought Venga Boys or Top Loader or something, one of the bollocks. No, <laughs> I did. I, I thought, thought into me. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> thought. I, I'm amazed we haven't heard like fucking Bewitched in that list, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Especially yeah, well, knowing not... your annoyance at not getting to see them all those years. Well, ago. exactly. If they if they cancelled on me, are they ain't getting any special treatment this time? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm fairly pleasantly surprised with that one, Stu. Well, in um, Andy, what about yourself? What's your um, what's your three day fest? What kind of what's the what's the mood and the vibe? Yeah, I've gone a little bit over the top with mine. Um, Blowing the budget. It, yeah, pretty much. I, I've gone similar to Stu. I've pitched it very much at myself, a sort of early two thousands indie kid who likes a little bit of everything. Um, the festival would be three day festival, Friday to Sunday, very much like you know, like Leeds would have been. The Friday, right? The comp- it's going to be called the Compass Festival, and I'll explain why. So Friday is East Coast Friday, and this is going to be New York based musicians. We're going nice. to have Lady Gaga is going to be the opener. Ramones, I've gone like fantasy lineup for this, so we've got a couple of dead people. Uh, Ramones, Blondie, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, Kiss, Strokes, and headlining with Jay Z, which is a little bit different for a festival crowd because I don't normally go for the rap ones for, for mm-hmm. festivals, but I think Jay Z would put on a hell of a show. So I think that'd be a great way to open it up. The Saturday would be Best Midlands, and this will have ELO, The Streets, Charlatans, Dexys, OCS. Led Zepp, Slade, headlining with Black Sabbath. Obviously, okay. all West Midlands-based bands. 
And then the Sunday is the North South divide. So this can be bands from that you associate with down south and up north. So Gorillas, I think Gorillas over Blur personally. I think there'd be a better festival band, especially with like the visuals up on the big screen and everything. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Nathaniel Rightly from the Night Sweats, very much the bluegrassy um, Bakersfield sound of country music, which is quite obviously Southern America. Hot Hot Heat, they're a Canadian band, so we've got the Great White North, Proclaimers, Rufus Wainwright, Dolly Parton, Oasis, and the headliner of that night would be The Cure. Imagine having a festival where Oasis isn't your headline and you can you still afford The Cure. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dread to think the price of the ticket for that, but no, that's a quality concept, to be fair, mate. I really do like that. Um, Pricey, what about yourself? Talk me through Price Fest. Price Fest. Uh, Price Fest has um, a bit of everything, really. It has, I thought I'd start the first day off with uh, British bands from my youth. So, that, like, bands when I remember when I first like started listening to this type of music. Um, and that are still going today, like, still qu- actually quite touring and popular today. So, I just picked three. And so, first one, always, always a good laugh. Always up for a good time. Skin dread. Because mm-hmm. you know what you're getting with them. A bit of Union Black. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, then 100 Reasons, a band which mm. I really love. And it's when you look into their story, they've all they've they've had like the most immense amount of bad luck possible. They've, every album they've done, it, it's it, it's excellent. There's not much filler on on their albums. It's all on their albums. It's all the good stuff. Well, unfortunately for them, every time they get signed by a record label, that record label gets taken over and the CEO of, of the company that just took them over just drops them. It's, ha- it's happened every right. time. At one point, they had more record labels and albums out. That's insane. <laughs> and, did, um, they, um, did they ever play the Birmingham Academy as was? They literally just played the HMV Institute, which is what I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's the, the same one then, yeah yeah um yeah really every every song is a killer and another one from that era as well funeral for a friend i remember when i was um a youth and their first album come out casually dressed i was just in love with that album I used to listen to it non-stop and um i think it was one of it wasn't the first band I saw live. It was, but it was probably one of the first five bands I saw live, and I was still like being amazed and aghast at going to see live music. I was like, "Oh wow, this is like, they're amazing!" So, yeah, for like a British bands from my youth in the, the first day, second day, you just have to have a new metal day, do you not? So you do. N- not too much to dwell on this one, really, but just the, the big, the big three, really: Corn, Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park. Of all, have got to be in there because you just again you know what you're getting. Um, in fact, Linkin uh, Linkin Park is something like you know, especially their first two albums. Again, just all hits. We've all sung along to it in nightclubs, mm-hmm. gigs everywhere. And I remember, I remember seeing actually Linkin Park. I think I've only actually saw them once in my life, and it was that was the last time I played Download. They were convinced to do um, Hybrid Theory all the way through. They don't normally do that, I don't think, but I think Andy Copy at Download convinced them to do it. And um, it was good, but also it must have been a bit of, um, well, quite expected really from for, for the band. They play, obviously, the, the whole stage was packed out to see them. They played Hybrid Theory all the way through, and as soon as they finished the last notes, the last song, nearly half of the crowd just turned around and walked off because they, fin- they finished Hybrid Theory, but they still had. All new, they're still going to play all the newer songs, which obviously no yeah, one really likes that much. Crazy. So yeah, a lot of them just you just saw half the crowd just go off the goat back to the back to the tent. But for me, yeah, they'd still be in there. And then the third day, I'd have a pyro day. So bands that just love to let off a fuckload of fireworks and pyro. <laughs> and with that, I've got Slipknot, Kiss, and it's got to be topped, of course, by Ramstein because they're just fucking mentalists, yep. <laughs> as we know dildos and bumming on stage yes please where do i where do i sign <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. 
uh, and the one thing I've attempted to, to go with, right, and this could be a bit controversial, but I couldn't really fit it in. I was going to have a one album wonder day. So three bands who've just got mm. one one good album and one album, and where they've just kind of nosedived after that. And I was going to have that. The three I was going to have for that was obviously the Sex Pistols. I was going to have the Darkness because their first album mm. is top draw. Yeah. And after that, I, I, I can't really. You know, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't they release anything good after the first album. They're literally the definition of a one one album wonder. And then this one will be a bit controversial, but I kind of class Guns N' Roses as a one one album wonder band. Because hmm. use your yeah. illusions. I don't know. I'm not convinced by not convinced by those. So Appetite for Destruction is obviously epic, but I don't. I think they dropped off a cliff after that. So and you my, could almost call them two different bands altogether once they like mm. got mtv famous um yeah they, they weren't that sleazy kind of motley crewness that they had with appetite for destruction they didn't feel the same after that uh for me anyway but mm. um i like those those themes are all too good and i haven't put nearly as much thought into this which has upset me because um <laughs> i've got a three-day festival um i'm having mine thursday to saturday because um, a you've got to travel to Scotland for mine, so everyone's got to get home. So I'm giving them the Sunday to travel back. Um, because I want to do a NC 500 festival, so it's going to be geared towards maybe camper vanners or people have got to drive there. But I want in over three locations. I want people to do the festival. They get up. Music won't start till quite late in the day to allow people to get around. So you, we can have a beach night, a forest night, and like a mountain night where it's in like those are the backdrops of the festivals because that's what i experienced when i did that road trip of of the nc 500 in nottingham the north coast from inverness all the way around back through to inverness again um so my night one starts off indie but it's you end up in a in a in a dirty mosh pit not metal wise but as so i'm starting off with the subways i think they're really high energy mm. and i think they um would tie nicely into the greatest entertainers of rock and roll, the hives. Um, and then I'm following it up with my personal preference of Jamie T. Cause if you saw him at any highlights from his Glastonbury show last year, um, it was just insane. And I went to, a, I went to the gig and little Dan from fan was at the gig recently. And it was the, it was the roughest non metal gig I've ever been to in terms of the crowd was crazy and it was pushing and shoving and it was, it was raucous. Um, so that's my night one. Night two, we need to we need to come down really to build up for our night three. So I'm having Ladies' Day at the festival. Um, so I'm st- I'm trying to start off with the first band isn't as big as the second band isn't as big as the third band. So I'm starting off with Alanis Morissette, and I'm stipulating she has to play Jagged Little Pill in full. Then I'm having Blondie. Um, I don't care which age of Debbie Harry she is because I. I'd still shag her, so it's fine. Um, and then I'm f- I'm f- headlining with uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, he doesn't have to be like the the Stevie Nicks stuff, mm. um, but it's you know they're there obviously um, in this made up festival where some people are still alive. Um, so we're 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 rested, we're relaxed going into my balls out day, um, which is Enter Shikari to start. Um, a bit of electro dancey, but still heavy. Finishing it off with Limp Biscuit, and then to top the headline slot off, a bit of Slipknot to finish the night. Just craziness. You get the pyro stuff. You get the metal. They're really good entertaining. It's a real visual spectacle. And then you have the long, long drive home afterwards. Um, so that would be my three night festival. A little kind of snippet into all of the musical things I'm into as well. Um, so that was my that was my festival. Um, for those listening at home. Please send us a um, or reply to the tweet when this goes out. Let us know which festival of the four of our the our festivals, which one you'd most likely go to, um, that we could try and convince someone to bankroll for Twitter us. Twitter poll. Twitter poll. Yeah, we'll Twitter poll it. Good point. Um, final bonus question, really. Um, just the best live performance you've seen at a festival, or if you haven't been to one, the best one you've seen on video, Stu. Nebworth Oasis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just looks mental. Well, and you can kind of throw in the the Liam Gallagher one as well. The 
the tribute that wasn't a tribute that has known a couple of people who went to both said that the one was it last year or the year before um the Liam one was equally as good as the one in 94. Wow. So just watching that, watching that Blu-ray, which again, is over there, um, of Nebworth with surround sound, it's as good as we're going to get when we, we were, what, 10 at the time. Um, yeah, it just looks mental, the whole thing. Peak of their powers. A, a festival or... Well, whatever the hell it was was that's still talked about now, mm-hmm. even with people who don't even like Oasis. So, yeah, for me, that one. Okay, Andy, what about yourself? Um, the best one that I've seen that I didn't go to, Dolly Parton at Glastonbury a few years ago, watched it on the Oh, iPad, yeah. And it was incredible, and I thought, I bet that would have been a, a great day to be there. The best ones that I've seen myself, Blink-182, Put on one hell of a show, like I was just in awe of Travis on the drums. Like his drum kit was, it, it looked like it was bigger than the stage. Like it was spilling over the edges. It was huge, and he managed to play the whole thing, and it was just fantastic. Everybody had a great time. There was all the dick jokes and everything you expect with Blink One Eighty Two. So there was, you know, you had a bit of a laugh as well as just enjoying the music. But a special mention to a band I think you used to like, Matt, The Rakes. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I love the rakes. Yeah, the lead singer, Alan, was sick one weekend that he was supposed to be at a festival. So rather than cancel, the lead guitarist took over. But then he brought on, like, Kelly and Russell from Block Party and Donny Tourette from um, Towers of London and just brought on all his mates to just sing songs whilst they were carrying on playing. And, like, it could have been an absolute disaster, but because they all sort of banded together, it ended up being a really fun show. Okay, excellent. That sounds really good. I'd like to have seen that. Price, what about yourself? What's your um, best live performance you've seen? Um, I think I, meant, I, I mentioned them before, and it's probably unsurprising, but it was when I saw Ramstein at, at Download the first time. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, to the uninitiated with Ramstein, it doesn't matter that they're singing in songs in German. It, it generally doesn't matter because what when you see them live, they just sound amazing. I think they're all actually qualified pyrotechnicians. Hence why mm-hmm. they just they blow shit up time and time again. And, and that that all come from the fact that when they in the early days when um, they wanted to do their pyro set pieces, their actual pyrotechnician at the time said, "I'm not doing that." It's too dangerous. So they all learned how to be pirate technicians themselves so that they could do what they want on the stage shows. Oh, okay. And then Download, that was the one where, I mean, like I say, he has the big angel wings where like that's all set on fire. There is Flake, the keyboardist, he's like the bitch of the group. So they're always doing stuff to him all the time. And in fact, <laughs> that was the one where Till, the lead singer, has a... a a big black dildo and he simulates anal sex with flake and then pretends basically the end of this dildo shoots fake cum into all the crowd. What's lots of love? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. Um, love. Yeah. Obviously when they play pussy, they've got the big cock as well that fires all the fake sperm foam into the crowd. So yeah, you, 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 it's just, it's just, a, it, it sounds obviously a bit, you know, ro- a bit like a bunch of wrong guns, but you know, you know, you know, you know what you're getting when you see. It's just the sound, the sound great. And this that particular download was, I think, the first time I saw them at a festival. And the wife was with me as well, and she was just in awe of um, of what they were doing. Like she had no idea what to expect. So I just said, just watch it and see what you think. And she came away. I think <laughs> that they were absolutely amazing. So um, I think obviously there's. You could pick from quite a few bands. I've seen festivals over the years, but but that Ramstein one on the way home. So I think they closed the festival that year. On the way home, I was just like, "Wow!" Like that was just immense. And that was a weekend that, that it was, was cool. Slipknot, I made and Ramstein. So they were up against like big competition, but they were the what Ramstein were the ones where you just go away thinking that was just immense. What an what an experience. Well, funny because my my one of a few was that same festival. While you would have been watching. 
Iron Maiden, I was watching The Hives, and it was like just watching a conductor at work, Pele just conducting like a crowd. Like I've never seen anything like it. So be, they'd be so entertaining. For you know, they'll they'll be the first to admit the Hives. They're not the most like technically gifted band. They're not like it's not high art music, but the way that they just conduct everything is is just unbelievable. But one a surprise performance. So I liked this band before I saw them, but I didn't really like. No, I only knew one album so much. But I saw Biffy Clyro at Sonosphere, and they were just they were like the consummate professionals of of rock and roll. They just they were so tight musically, and they just like. It was one of those like hair stands on end, like you're witnessing a really great live performance. It was just brilliant. It wasn't like all bells and whistles or anything like that, but it's one of the few times where I've been so impressed by a band. I've then become a big fan after seeing them. Um, And they were sensational. Mm. Yeah, they were really, really good. I had a a lot of fun seeing them. I saw Biffy Clyro just after they did their first album. Um, I can't remember. Oh, the only song I remember was Questions and Answers. And it was proper dirge, like really bland, boring shit. So I never listened to them again for years and years and then like revisited their stuff much later on. And like this, this isn't the same band I saw. Yeah. They became so much better. I kind of wish I'd have got to see them in their more formative years when they're a little bit more, a uh, bit older and a bit wiser, I think. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you completely. Well, that is that for um, this MusiCast episode. I hope you've enjoyed it at home. Um, we will um, be back next week with Andy. Hopefully you know, because I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, question okay. cast, I think. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, yeah, we're back to business as usual. So thank you very much for listening. Um, Price, I hope you've enjoyed your debut episode on Cage Fighting. Hopefully not the last time. I hope you've uh, had fun with us this evening. I have indeed. As much fun as I can with three bald men. Well, then, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you uh, have liked what you've heard, please tell a friend. It's at Cage Fighting Pod on the socials. We really would like to grow um, this podcast. So tell a friend and help us do exactly that. Would be very much appreciated. For now, Andy, if you'd like to say goodbye. See you soon, everybody. Stu, if you'd like to say goodbye. He had fun with five Americans with tashes on Tuesday. We ain't talking about that, are we? That, that's pricey, by the way, not me. That, that didn't happen while I was away. <laughs> goodbye. Price, if you'd like to say goodbye. Goodbye, all. Take care. And from me, remember to party on, dudes. <laughs>